Okay, we have our 10 interesting series. We've got the sum from n equals one to infinity of i to the n over n squared. And over here to the right, we just have a few terms expanded out. I got this idea from a video by Cybermath. He did the problem where, oh, it just wasn't squared. So he just did, he just did this one where it was just an n here. I'll probably do a video on that problem too, but right now we're looking at this case, which is just a little different, where we have an n squared in the denominator. So to get started with it, what I want to do is I want to use the fact that the numerators are going to repeat because even though like, okay, your i exponents are going to keep going, what's going to happen is these are going to regenerate. Like if we start with i to the one, of course, is i. But if we get i squared, we just multiply this by i and that's going to be minus one. For i cubed, multiply by i again and we get minus i. i to the fourth, do it again i squared times minus one, that's just a one. So then for i to the fifth, when we multiply by i again, we just get back to i, which is the same thing as this. So this is just gonna repeat on and on like this forever. So what this is gonna allow me to do is rewrite this whole sum, expanding out the terms, but using this for the denominator so that we just have this repeating denominator, sorry, for the numerator, the numerators are just gonna repeat after the fourth one, after i to the fourth. And then from here, what I want to do is actually split out the real part from the imaginary part. We can do that where we can see here all the all the um, even all the even denominators. These are all going to be real. And then for all the odd terms, looking at this like one squared here, these are all going to be this will be our imaginary part. OK, so now we have our real part separated from our imaginary part. The first thing I want to do on the real part is let me factor out minus one over two squared or minus one fourth. When we do that, the first term is gonna become a one. The next term is gonna be minus one over two squared. The third term is gonna be plus one over three squared. And this pattern is just gonna continue alternating signs, everything squared. But now that we have it written out like this, we're gonna notice we've got a definite pattern to each of these. Here we've got alternating signs. I can write this as like a one squared here. And so we've got the denominator is just going to be one, two, three, four, five. Here, same kind of thing, alternating sign, but all the denominators are odd. And so what we're going to do is we've got two formulas that are going to help us evaluate these two series. Okay, so we have our two formulas over here to the right. The first one, the eta function at s, just notice that this is in the same form as what we have right here. We've got alternating sign, one, two, three, four, five, six, and the only, the only thing to notice here is the exponent here on everything is squared, where here everything is s. So what we can do is say that this right here is just going to be eta at 2. And then for our imaginary part, we can use this second formula for the Dirichlet beta function at s. Same thing, 2n plus 1. This is going to be all odd terms here, okay? Alternating sign with the minus 1 to the n here. The only thing we need to deal with is the exponent. Everything here is squared. Here it's s, so our input on this is just going to be a 2. So all this here is going to be Dirichlet beta function at 2. So in order to finish this off, it's just a matter of can we express this a nicer way. Well, for this beta 2 value, this is the same thing as Catalan's constant. We can write this as a g, a big g. This numeric value is something like 0 0.915966, something like that. Now for this value, eta at two, I've derived this in other videos. Um, you also could just memorize the values. It's a pretty common value, but we can also calculate it pretty quick because we have, because we have a formula relating the eta function to the Riemann zeta function. So we can use this formula over here if we just remember that Riemann zeta at two is pi squared over six. So I can just plug into this formula. Eta at two is gonna be one minus, our s value is two, so this is gonna be minus one, or this will become a one half right here. And then we can bring down this value, pi squared over six. But then one minus one half, this is just one half times pi squared over six. Put this together and our eta at two value is just gonna be pi squared over 12. So we can put all these pieces together now. Here, this is gonna be minus one fourth times our eta at two, pi squared over 12, plus i times Catalan's constant. Multiply this together for my final solution on this, we just get minus pi squared over 48 plus ig, and that's it. One note on this, you may notice this is actually the same thing as the dialogarithm of i. I was trying to find a way maybe to use that, but it just seemed like it was gonna be more difficult if I like turn this into an integral or something. 
So there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.